that voice you hear on the uh, on the microphone, of course, is our our one and only Ted Tapuzis with uh, Tapuzis and Associates. Thanks, Amelia. You're welcome. And Ted is a licensed attorney, and uh, is is that the right term? Can I say licensed attorney? You can say that. Yeah. Practicing attorney. A practicing I'm practicing attorney. for years and years. I'm. You know, it takes a while to get it right. Yeah, yeah. Well, ex- <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Doctors practice, too, That's right? That's right. They do. So, yeah. so you know, Ted covers Florida, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. That's correct. Needless yep. to say, this gentleman knows his stuff, and that's why we have him just on the show. Just real estate. Yeah. Just, uh, well, he, he focuses just on real estate. Yeah. So when it comes to, you know, people asking questions or whatnot, I'm always referring them to Ted Tapuzis with Tapuzis and Associates. So, Thanks, Ted, Amelia. you're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show again. You're very welcome. And Ted's talking about, is for sale by owner worth the risk? Wonderful yeah, topic. Yeah, Emilio. Um, is it worth the risk? I mean, uh, you always think about uh, the commissions that are being saved in, in the, the course of a, uh, sure. you know, handling this on your own. You know, you, you, you know enough about your own house to be able to get, get by and, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and think that you can, you know, make the, the, the deal happen and, and, and save a few bucks, but there are some risks. There, there, there inherently are some risks involved. And I, I want, of course, as an attorney, the first and foremost uh, that comes to my mind is, uh, is uh, you have to be, uh, you know, provide full disclosure, compliance. You have to make sure that your purchase and sales agreement is, is uh, prepared correctly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these things definitely, if you don't follow the letter of the law, can definitely raise some uh, concerns for a potential seller um, if you're not uh, taking care of this properly. So, so you no say dis- disclosures, you know, can, can you get it? What exactly do you mean by disclosures? Where do they put that? What do they say on there? Do they leave things out? Yeah, sure. It- well, I mean, that's, you know, and, and having done this for 22 years, um, it's, uh, you, see, you see it all. Um, you know, generally, most of the time, luckily, uh, we have sellers that are represented um, by an agent um, that uh, that are selling their properties. So you know, they, the, all the disclosures, the purchase and sales agreement, uh, any anything that uh, all the paperwork um, is uh, is is reviewed by an experienced uh, uh, professional that knows what they're doing. But mm-hmm. you know, if for those situations where um, and there are a lot of FISBO uh, transactions out there, I mm-hmm. imagine um, and. Uh, uh, those uh, that are that are out there, the uh, the sellers don't always know, um, you know, what needs to be done in the course of uh, a closing. I mean, there's the purchase and sales agreement that needs to be completed. You got to make sure that you're you're adi- you know, correctly uh, disclosing, um, you know, the uh, uh, let's you know. The lead disclosure, the mold lead disclosure, disclosure the sellers mold, disclosure. Yeah, seller's disclosure, yeah. mechanicals, uh, the roof, the, uh, um, you know, if, if there were any leaks that they're aware of, if there yeah. are any concerns with the property during the course of their, their ownership. This stuff has to come out. Um, and uh, I know that uh, we had a show uh, a couple of weeks ago where um, you know the the you know if somebody passed away in the house um, maybe that we weren't on a under a specific uh, re- requirement uh, to disclose that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember a couple you know, yeah, s- maybe yeah. a month and a half ago or so. Um, but uh, but there are definitely I mean if there's wetlands um, you you know there's there's limitations and and restrictions and in, in being able to access and cut trees and. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And build into into these uh, these these portions of your your lot, and you know you can't just say you've got two acres of buildable uh, land if if uh, you know three quarters of that is uh, is wetlands. So <laughs> so uh, Ted, you know what? While we're on the disclosures topic, mm-hmm. what happens if like say somebody did have like mold in the house, okay, mm-hmm. and they they got rid of it, but like not professionally, like they got mm-hmm. rid of it? Do they have to disclose? I mean, I. I that they're, if they're it's gonna, not there anymore, do they yeah, have to disclose? I, you know, the typical response there? would be, um, uh, "We we never had mold in the house." You know, so uh, that would be covering it up. But I, I think that you should disclose it. You should say okay. it was disclosed and it was remediated. But you know, that you don't want to do it. Um, you know. By yourself. I mean, you want to make sure you hire a professional because um, you, you never know what will come out of the uh, the transaction after the closing. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's after the closing that that will haunt you. Um, somebody gets sick, um, they trace it down to traces of mold, and and uh, you represented as a seller that there wasn't any mold. Yeah. Okay. Now. Potentially, they, they can they can track this down to see when the when the mold started growing, how long it's been there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now potentially you've misrepresented some facts 
to a to a buyer, um, and you've gotten yourself into into a jam. So okay. yeah, it's it's important. I mean, if you're going to have that type of thing in your in your house, uh, you know, electrical issue, mold. Um, you know, who knows what else? Uh, problems with your mechanicals. You you want to make sure you hire the right the right professionals to do yeah. to, to do the remedial work. You do, and I mean, this stuff comes up anyways because buyers are going to have inspection issues. That's right, exactly. I mean, that's one of the uh, yeah. uh, the important things. I, I I always when I'm representing a seller, I I, I try to uh, you know guide them to do an inspection prior to listing the property if they yeah. can. You know, because it's always a good idea Absolutely. to put it on the put on the market knowing what uh, issues or or you know if you've already. Um, you know, taking care of that inspection, uh, you don't have to worry about maybe three quarters of the issues that are going to be raised. There's, every inspector looks at things a little bit from a different angle and, mm-hmm. and might pick up something that uh, the last inspector didn't get. I mean, it, this is it's, it's experience. Do. Part they of it's do. experience. And I recommend uh, Mike Auger with Patriot Home Inspections. Great guy. Does a wonderful job. What now? So we've discussed, we discussed the disclosures, okay? Mm-hmm. And there could obviously be some legal implications yep. there. People could get sued, et cetera, if they're not disclosing things properly, if they don't have the right forms, et cetera, et cetera. They could also halt the real estate transaction. Now, I know yeah, that that's, that's there's, exactly. there's two other points that you have, and well, uh, I want to sneak those in before we have to cut to commercial. Right. Along well, the lines of what you just said, it might halt the uh, the transaction. One of the things that uh, a realtor or, or an experienced attorney will bring to the table um, to, to assist a seller is that uh, sometimes... Sometimes there's an issue. There might be a title issue. Um, there might be an issue that's unrelated to title that, that you need an experienced professional mm-hmm. by your side because otherwise you're going to stall out your transaction. Um, that plus the fact that, um, you know, I mean, sure, you've got, you're saving a buck with, uh, with commissions when you, when you don't list the property um, on the market with, and with an agent. But um, you've, uh, you're, you're leaving money on the table. Uh, you know, you're, uh, you, you could potentially be selling the property for a lot more money yes. than what the assessed value um, of that property is, is for. You know, so the assessed value isn't always a clear indication of what that property is worth. It might be up. It might be down. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but. You know, if you're leaving money on the table, that money could be the money that you're paying your agent with. You know, so yeah, you know, it's it all kind of works together. You don't want to be a fool about it. You want to make sure you 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 analyze your situation correctly so that you're do you're you're you're, you're helping yourself out the best you possibly can. It's Ted, I'm going to interject right there. So so when somebody lists their property on their own for sale by owner, a lot of times they do it to save money from for That's commission. Right. Okay, I think yep. uh, roughly 46 percent of consumers that did for sale by owner did it to save the the commission commission yep now i want you to know that on average across the country they they lose between 15 and 16 percent of what Mm. they would have net had they would have listed with a real estate agent that's those are (laughs) those are facts okay right so so why Why? so think about that that's 15 percent the commission you pay to your agent is six percent exactly or or five there's some or five low low service That you could get so five or imagine four. that's that's ten nine to ten percent that you're leaving on the table. Yeah, that, that could have gone into the seller's pocket. I mean, may, maybe um, there's an urgency involved. Maybe there's a, a neighbor that's uh, they, that that you've been talking to for the longest time that uh, wants to buy the property. Maybe mm-hmm. they want to expand their their yard or something. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some reasons why. You know, there, there's you know definitely some justification to uh, maybe not putting it on the market. But but for the most part, everybody's out there thinking that hey, they're going to sell their house, they're going to upgrade, they're going to downgrade, they're going to retire, they're yeah. going to move. And so you want to try to maximize your return. And not a lot of people know that they can hire a, a, a real estate agent to be the transaction coordinator. coordinator. They yeah. don't have to list the property. They don't even necessarily have to represent either party, but they can do all the paper shuffle, make sure that everything is on there. And agents, uh, we have seen, do that for between 1% to 3%. Sure. That's you know? right. That's right. Uh, another thing that I just wanted to throw in there, uh, if time permits, is that um, you know the the seller doesn't always uh, the seller might open their door to any potential buyer that uh, that that might knock on their door um, yeah. you know on a for sale by owner, but that doesn't sure. mean that that buyer is qualified either. So the agent. Um, will go through the process of vetting that buyer, making yeah. sure that they're qualified, uh, you know, prior to taking them out on the on the road to to take a look at at, at home. So, um, you know that you don't uh, as a, as a seller, you don't want to waste time. You you, you know the, the seasons change, the markets change, and uh, you gotta you gotta strike while the iron's hot. 